What's going on everybody? This is Justin with me, myself, and Dice. And if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. We do solo playthroughs of board games and other board game related content. If you haven't already, think about subscribing to the channel and if you enjoy these videos, please help the channel out and give us a thumbs up so that this video and other videos on this channel can reach other people who are interested in board games and solo board game related content. Today, we're playing Dwellings of Eldervale. Now, this is a game that the Kickstarter released, I believe, the end of last year, uh, beginning of this year, and it was up on their website to order. I got the big honking Legendary Edition, which has a lot of replay value in it and a lot of good, cool things that I haven't even explored yet. But today, we're going to do a full playthrough of this and a rules teaching so that if you're interested, and want to see more playthroughs of this in the future, then definitely give this a thumbs up so that I know that's something you guys are interested in. So that's enough waffling. Let's get to the table and play Dwellings of Eldervale. Welcome down to the table, everyone. We have everything laid out for our solo game of Dwellings of Eldervale. Can I just say that I love, when I opened this the first time, the watercolor art of the monsters is phenomenal. Uh, if they did a, a version just of this, I might would, would have to trade this out and, and get that. Man, that would be fantastic. I love the art otherwise, but this just pops so much. Just love it, just a nice aside. And as I mentioned up top, this was a pretty hot game last year. I didn't get to play it until this year, so it didn't get a chance to make my 2020 games. But if this gets a good number of views and, and people want to see more playthroughs, there's so much uh, in this game. And I'm trying to only play with the most basic stuff, but I do have the Legendary Edition. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that you can see and do in this game that you're not going to see in just one playthrough. For instance, you'll see we only have these four elements. You only play with four elements in a game. So we're only playing with this bottom half of the element board. I just grabbed, so that I wouldn't take up so much space, just grabbed one tray and went with those colors. So we are playing uh, Earth, Chaos, Darkness, and uh, Water, I believe it is. Other, otherwise known as green, purple, black, and blue. Dark blue. So I've gone ahead and set up everything. There's a lot of randomization. Uh, I've set up the map the way it is. Here's our draw pile. We do need to grab one of each leftover token and we'll randomly set these up on, this is the map for the ghost player, which is the AI. So we'll shake these up and just deal out purple. Here you'll see there is a one and two pip symbol there. There is a three and four there. There is a five there and a six there. So they're most likely to go after whatever the top two happen to be. Uh, we give them five magic cards. We don't look at them. These are just very much just points. Uh, anytime they gain a resource, they gain these instead. We need to roll one of their dice. We have all of their black dice. In fact, we have, you just grab any color you want, uh, an extra tray, and you're only gonna use the workers that I took out and laid out on the mat and the dice right here where they don't collect any resources but i do need to keep these roofs handy for this ghost player so we need to roll a die on this chart here we get a six so we are purple that we are the rattlings of the swarm so we are part of the chaos faction we start one up uh, with a little bit of power in the chaos track they on the other hand start with one in the blue right here and they take this blue door card now all of these are adventure cards they're shuffled up and face down in this tray but then there's a door card you see it's a little different it's got hinges a lock uh, every time you start a game there's a door card that's always going to be the same starting card so they're going to take that and they're already on the way on that water track so I set up the map randomly. We have the green monster tile that came out. When you set up the map, you can only have a maximum of one monster tile. So this is going to be the one that came out randomly out of the four monsters. There's a monster for each color. Uh, so the purple, we don't have, we have blacks, purples. We don't have any blues out. 
Uh, in this one, I think I'm playing with only the base characters. Like I said, I have the Legendary Edition and it comes with two different sets of monsters, one for each color, I believe it is. And I'm trying to play with hopefully only what would come in the Retail Edition. So uh, I love the sculpts of these. I really love the art of this. I love the sculpts of these. These are fantastic sculpts and they just put a wash on it, which actually works really well on the majority of these. There's a couple that are a little messy, but as a painter, you know what? These are these are good. I'm, I'm quite happy to leave them as they are. So we're gonna turn this over and put the Treant right here. Now the Treant has a special map ability. As long as the ancient Treant is in Eldervale, the Mage Tower produces one additional magic card. So we have the Mage Tower right here. We're gonna put just a little green uh, stone there just to remind us that something special happens if we go there. That's all that is. That's not something that comes with the game. It's just I tend to forget those things. We have our watcher piece right here that will play into the ghost player. We do have their dice set aside and we have their AI deck. I'll shuffle it up. I'll give it one more shuffle because we need to deal out three cards. There are numbers of pips also under each of these sections where we place a card. One right here, one right here, one right here. So one, two, and three will be this section. Four and five is this section, and six is this section. We have, we are the starting player always, so we have our marker set at one, and they are set at double zero. And then I have the orb set at the top of each track, and on number four and number seven, as is pictured, just so that I remember that that's an option there. That's it, we're ready to get started and we look at the player reference, we can either place a unit or regroup. Well, we have no units out here, so we need to start with placing a unit. Uh, we do start with one of each resource, as you see down here. What I love, I love this about this game is that I love when I can pack up a game and it be ready to play without doing hardly any setup, especially here with the players. You take the top, which is the player mat, off, set it down, and all of this is in place ready to go. So I love that. So we have our roofs, I'll call these hats. We'll see why later on, but they go on top of our workers like that. And um, we have our other optional workers here. Uh, there's pips underneath these because to hire this worker, we have to spend one of any resource. We have to spend two for our second worker and they don't have to match and three resources for our third worker. And we do need to flip this over. So we're ready to go placing a unit. Now I'll take a worker and I can place it anywhere on this board. And I think, hmm, I think I'm going to go right here maybe? No. Yeah, I think I'm going to go right here. When you place your worker on a realm, you'd simply take the top tile that's there and some of them have tiles you can choose from and you pop it in one of these four holds right here you can trade it in as a free action at any time for in this case one of those because there's a slash in there either a potion or a sword so that's my turn and now the ghost gets to go we simply roll a die we get a three we look down here that's this section and they are going to place we're just going to look at the top right now uh, when we finish our turn after we place we always place the watcher the Watcher doesn't do anything, it just follows around. It chronicles the history of Elderville. So we look on this, just the top part, and we have a symbol for the Watcher right here. So we find, it's saying find the tile where the Watcher is, and they want to place a worker. You take the leftmost worker. They want to place northeast. So they would place there, but you can't, there's no tile, there's no tile. So they would place where the watcher actually is. So they're gonna come in here. Now usually that would evoke a, a battle, but uh, they start on the glory track, we do not. We have, until we do our regroup phase, we have what's called peaceful beginnings. No battles are gonna happen during this first phase. So they come here and they take the top tile and it's usually the leftmost tile uh, in these cases. They don't care about what's on it because they don't collect anything. They turn it over and they put it in the track where the matching uh, icon is. So they're going to fill up this track and when they cover up something, they get that bonus. So for instance, that's the symbol for a magic card. If they cover that up, they'll get 
basically one point for the end of the game. So that's going to go right there. Very simple. And then we look at the bottom. If it has another action, they do that. So this is going to be, they place a new realm. So they draw a realm, and it is the monster tile for darkness. And we get to decide where to place it. They don't have any decision uh, capabilities in this process. So they get to decide where it's going to be placed. And, hmm, where should I put it? I think I actually want to put it right here, maybe? Yeah, that looks good. Perhaps right there. Okay, so we're going to do this. We'll bring out his card. And we need a stack. Now, there is one stack that only has two in it. That's going to be the last stack. That's because they took one from that. So, we'll put a stack of three down there. And that's all they do. That's their turn. Very simple. Very simple, but very engaging. Okay, so we can place another worker. We have, now we got to place anywhere we wanted to on the first time. Workers have to be placed adjacent. They can't wander off too far. So we have to place either at the mill, the mage tower, or this area right here. And I think we're going to go for this area right here. And I'm going to take this potion token. We need to deal in my card and they're going to roll a six. So they're going to take this worker and they want to go north west right here. Of course, the watcher should be here. Sorry. The watcher is just wherever I place last. So I will forget to move it a lot. Uh, they want to place there. They can't. So they're going to place here. Take the leftmost token. And then they want to gain a new adventure card. So they're going to roll on this track again. Whoops. They rolled a four. So they're going to take a green card. And add it to. They don't really make a tableau. I just kind of keep them over here. Uh, whenever we gain a card. It has the element symbol on it. So they're going to go up on the green track. They don't have one there, so they're going to put it there at two. We flip this over, and that's their whole action. Flip a new card. All right. Okay, I'm going to place, I need to place adjacent to one of those. I'm going to place right here in the mill. So we placed in the mill. We want to build a dwelling. Now, typically, a monster would rush in as soon as we place there, but in Peaceful Beginnings, they don't rush. So we're going to place a mill and the action for that is build a dwelling. So you'll send, see that same icon on all of these realms with some resources underneath. That's how much it costs to build a dwelling there. So we look for a place where we can legally build a dwelling. And right now I have a worker here and here. So that's the only two places I could possibly build. I, I have no only one hammer, so I can't build that one but I can get two potions. So I have one potion in my inventory and I could trade this in for another potion as a free action. So that is two potions. So I can build a dwelling here. I take the hat, rooftop hat, put it on top of my worker and that worker is now gone forever. It goes right there. And now no one else can build a dwelling in that realm we place just discard this and we score so we look around and we score two points for every adjacent ruin so any of these uh, gold edge tiles so we get two four points then we look around to any adjacent dwellings whether they be ours or or the enemies and we get two points for each adjacent dwelling. There are none in this time. We get two, four, just four points. Not bad. So we're up to five. Okay, that's our turn. These guys are going to go. They roll a three. They take the leftmost here. And they want to play specifically in the portal. So no, no having to figure out the watcher scenario there. Just play straight in the portal. And it says undead monster. Choose one destroyed monster and return it to its lair. Any units or other monsters in the lair are sent to the underworld. The underworld is right here. This is where when uh, you're instructed to or when you lose battles, your units go here. They can't do that because nobody's killed a monster yet. So they just skip that action. Get a new card. 
So our turn again, and we have no units over here. So we're going to have to do our second option, which is regroup. And that means we just bring our units back from wherever they may be back to our player area. So we take our units from the map one by one. And that may be important because we have some options when we retrieve our workers. We can place our workers or assign our workers here for whatever the ability is. So we have this, which acts the same as the portal, we can summon. And you see the cost, two gems and a scroll for a dragon, uh, two potions and a scroll for our wizard, two hammers and a sword for our warrior, and then, like I said at the beginning, one resource for of any type, that's what the treasure chest means, one resource of any type for our first worker, two of, doesn't have to match resources, and three for our third. Or we can gather and gain, in our case, a potion, or we can make a dwelling. So what I did in the mill. So if I wanted to make a dwelling, for instance, I would put this here, I would have to make sure that I still had a worker out where I need to do that. So the order can matter because I can come get a resource that I might need first, um, different things like that. But I, in this case, I think we're going to come here, gather a potion, or, ooh. Yeah, we're gonna gather a potion. And sorry, I was thinking. And then we're going to bring this one back and summon a, another worker to replace the one we lost. So we have to pay one resource of any type. We're going to pay a sword. Goes back into the bank. And then these come back to our mat. We are done with our regroup phase. Pretty simple. They're going to continue to go. And they roll a six. So they're going to do this, which I was afraid they were going to do. Uh, actually, I'm, they're going to build a dwelling no matter what this turn. Uh, so they're going to go place in the mill. We rolled a six. So they're going to put their wizard out. Mill goes right there. And choose any elemental realm that is occupied by a ghostly worker that does not already contain a dwelling. Construct a ghostly dwelling using that worker. So that means that this is the only viable option right here. So they're just going to, they don't have to pay anything because they're cheaters and they're going to build a dwelling. So put a hat on that. They score as we did. They score two for this, two for this, that's four, but they score two for us being beside of them. So they score two, four, six. So they are up to six, we are up to five. What I forgot to do is when you make a dwelling, there's a symbol up here, and you go up that track by one, or per symbol. So here, when they make a dwelling here, they're going to go up the black track twice because there's two symbols. So they come onto the black track and then go up there. So that was a pretty successful turn for them. Now, after we regroup, we move our uh, marker up onto the glory track. And now there's no more peaceful beginnings. Uh, so actually, when they came in, a monster would rush. And I'm going to make that monster rush. Now, when you do this, you still carry out the um, actions that they have to do the battle doesn't happen until after actions are done so you're you're never robbed of doing your actions and though the watcher is not supposed to move from there uh, because when i regroup it just stays where it is so let's look at the death reaper it has uh rewards down here how many dice it rolls right there so this guy's going to roll four and after a battle fear after a battle is triggered with the death reaper additional units may not join the battle so that's why I chose him to rush instead of him because I didn't want them to pull in this dude right there to help them out. So if you look down, it's really hard to see. It's maybe easier to see over here. There's a little dice symbol under each of the types of units and that's how many dice that unit rolls in battle. So a wizard right here is only going to roll one, whereas a dragon, if you can see right here or right here, rolls three. So dragons are very powerful. So the wizard is going to roll one. They then, usually the AI is always going to pull in units, but this time he can't. Uh, and then they look around and see if there's any friendly dwellings adjacent or in the same area as them. Then they each dwelling will add a die too. And then we as players can spend swords for extra dice. They also they instead look in the underworld and they get to roll an extra die for every unit that's in the underworld that's that's their swords 
So right now we luck out, we roll one die, it's a five, and we need to roll the four for the Death Reaper. So we'll place that five right there, roll the four, and what you do is you stack the dice in descending order. So they roll two sixes, you take the highest dice and you compare them and whoever has the highest wins. So the monster defeats that unit and that unit goes in the underworld. Now if this had been a six, let's say, then there would be a tie, these would just get ignored and you would go to the next highest die. And since six is bigger than zero, they still would have won and it can go all the way down. But, and if there's a tie, nobody wins. So I'll be honest, this guy scares me because I don't like the fact that I can't, I can't bring in other units. It's very, he's very hard to beat. Uh, I think I'm going to go here and grab this potion. The ghost goes and they cannot roll into the tray. By they, I mean myself. They roll a two. So they're gonna take this worker. Of course, the watcher came over here and they want to place southwest of me and they can't unlike us we can't place a worker or a unit at all in an area where we already have one they can and then they want to construct a dwelling and there's a little compass down here that shows you their priority order so in the middle is the watcher symbol that's one and then it goes around so this would be one two three four five six and seven but they have no legal place that they can uh, build because you can't build a dwelling here so they're just going to skip that this turn which works for me I think the next thing I'm going to do is go right here and grab this hammer and of course we'll try to remember to move the watcher they're going to roll and they roll a four so they want to go right here they can't so they're going to go here they're going to take this and flip it over and then they want to construct a dwelling, same as last time. Except now they can, and this really stinks. Now they're going to, they look and where the watcher is, that's their number one priority. They're going to cheat and sneak that dwelling out from under us, which really stinks. They score it at two, four, no other dwellings around. So just four points, one, two, three, four. And then they're going to go up the green track twice. So they are... They are doing well on that earth track. Let's go up here. I'm going to grab one of these. That's my fourth one. That's it for that turn. They roll and they roll a two. They're going to take their last one in that section and they want to go to the dungeon, which is right here. And they're going to roll for a new adventure card. They roll a one. So they're going to take a purple card and come on to the purple track, which is not good. I want them not on the purple track. All right, we need to regroup and thinking about how I want to do this, I think I'll definitely pull this one back first. Let's move the watcher right there. Pull this one back first and I think I'm going to gather with him. So that's gonna be a potion. I think you can see where I might be going with this. We're gonna pull this one back and we're gonna use him to dwell we need to turn in something. Let's turn in this one. This one gives us, some of them, like this one, have a slash through it, which means either or. This one does not, so I get one of each, which is fantastic. So one potion and one hammer. Now you can never have more than five resources. It says it right here on the inside of that lip. You can never have more than five of any one resource. Uh, so we gotta keep that in mind. So let's see, I'm going to dwell, I'm going to spin those three, and I'm going to make this one into a dwelling, give him a little hat, and I should get some good points off of this. So we're going to get two, four, six, eight points. So two, four, six, eight, plus surrounding dwellings, we get two more, 10, 12. So we get points for every single thing around us. That is a very valuable tile. So two, four, six, 8, 10, 12. So we're at 5, 10 takes us to 15, 17. They're going to roll the dice and they roll a 6. So whenever they look 
and they roll a section where they have no more units, instead of doing an action or placing, because they can't, they regroup. This is their regroup. So they look at the board. Any that come back from a realm just comes back. It, it, nothing happens. But if they uh, come back from a ruin, any of these gold, they get two points for each one that comes back. So two, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're right behind us. They gain one point for every unit in the underworld. So we are tied at 17. And then everything goes back. There's numbers above these. Uh, this tells you because they've lost some workers, for instance, uh, this fills out in a different way. So one goes, number one goes there. The second one goes there. The third one goes here. The warrior, of course, goes here. And the wizard goes there. So now you'll see that as they lose workers, they're going to start doing regroups a little more often. I think I'm going to place right here. That's going, I'm going to take the two swords right there. And of course we move the watcher and these guys get to go these ghosties number four they want to place into the dungeon now i might have said this but uh just making sure when you have no workers on the board uh when you do after you do your re regroup when you place your first worker you cannot place like i can't place it where a monster is and i can't place it where an enemy is i can place it where they have a dwelling but if he had already had something out like that. I couldn't place it right there. Not on your first turn. Okay, so back to where we were. They are going to the dungeon and they want to get a new adventure card. So they roll a three, which is green. They're gonna get, ooh, the wyvern, wyvern's nest. I can never say that word. Uh, man, this would have been a really nice one to get for later in the game. Actually been a good one to get any anytime. Uh, they beat me to it. I have my eye on it. All right, so they're gonna go up the green track one more and it looks like they're gonna max it out before we even get on it. And I should be up two more on this track. One, two, just making sure. And you, it's usually easy to double check because I have one here, one there, and two there. So I should be four up. One, two, three, four. Let's replace their card and we need to place a worker, and I'm going to try something maybe a little foolish. I'm going to go right here. Uh, this is risky. Uh, I get to choose. Because there's two monsters, I get to choose. I'm going to let this one rush in. Now, remember what I said. I can always uh, finish my action first. And this one is trade in two resources of any type. doesn't have to be matching. And you gain three magic cards and discard one. But because of the tree inability, remember the stone there, we get to get four cards and discard one. So uh, we need to discard two of something. I think I'm going to discard a hammer. And um, let's see. I will trade this in for two swords and I'll discard a sword. So I only get one instead of two. So I'm going to be able to draw four cards. So I'm, I'm trying something a little dangerous here, but I'm hoping that I can maybe get a card that helps us and maybe just just uh, use some trickery to defeat this beast. Okay, so uh, there are several types of cards. There are these that are magic cards that you play for an ability. There are these that are called prophecy cards. They have a little eyeball in them that offer in-game scoring. And then there's one with a boat on it that are called quests. Those are ones you can complete throughout the game and gain bonus points throughout the game. So let's see, we have Raise Dead. Play when you regroup. Your units in the underworld may be used to activate tableau cards this turn. That may be good for us because if we lose this battle, when you bring back things from the underworld, they go straight to your mat. So you can't use them on these cards. Uh, we have Swirling Vision. Play on your turn, discard any number of magic cards from your hand and draw magic cards equal to the amount of discarded plus one. That's really good. Fireball, play before rolling dice in battle. For this battle, roll two additional dice. We're definitely keeping that one. And then Comet, at the end of the game, this card is worth two points and one for each prophecy card, so each card with this that you have. So that's some in-game scoring. Uh, that means, that may set me to going after magic cards a little hard though. Um, I have to discard one. 
I think I'm going to discard Swirling Vision. Um, this is the one that discards magic cards and you replace them. Uh, I think if I'm going to go after magic cards, I'm just going to end up using it the old-fashioned way. So these are in our hand. Okay, now we resolve the battle, and this guy is going to roll five dice. All five dice. That's the most a monster rolls. We'll get this out of here, and we'll pull our dice. So when we go into battle, we get one dice for each worker. Again, workers roll one, warriors roll two, and dragons roll three. Then we can choose to pull in any adjacent units, and we're going to pull this guy in. And we're going to bring the Watcher over here before I forget because that's where I place. Now, we have a special ability. Each uh, faction has a special ability on, I believe, all of them have two special abilities. So we have a special ability with our workers and with our dragon. Our workers, each time your worker joins a battle, gain a sword. So we're just going to gain a sword. That's fantastic. So that worker is going to give us a second one. Then we look around and for every adjacent dwelling or dwelling in that area, we gain a die. So we gain two more dice. And now we can spend any swords we like to gain dice. And I think I'm going to spin the sword we just got and gain a fifth die. So that puts us on at least even grounds. Actually, no, I'm not going to spin that sword. You know what? I'm going to play the fireball. So the fireball, it doesn't cost me anything to play. Some, some cards will. Most cards don't. Uh, before playing rolling dice for battle, roll two additional dice. So instead of that sword, this will give me that additional dice plus my last one. So I'm rolling all six of my dice. So we just roll them all together. And I rolled a five. He rolled a five. So that cancels. I see two fours for him, and I don't see any for me. Lots of threes, though. So there we go. It was, it was a hard-fought battle. A hard-fought battle, but I lost. It was a two, I believe. I lost. So uh, both of these get sent to the Underworld. When we get sent to the Underworld, we get a sword for each unit that goes there. So we're up to four swords. Oops. And that monster just stays right where it is. All right, let's clean up our dice. Ah, uh, it was a valiant effort. This gets discarded. Uh, but we, we got something done. We got some, some cards and we tried. And now we have some more resources, some swords. Okay, they watched, they laughed at us, and now they're going to go. They're going to place their wizard <laughs> right here because they think they have a better chance than we do. Uh, they're going to construct a dwelling. They don't have any workers in a legal place to construct. Flip that over, and they're going to roll one. They have none in the underworld, and uh, they don't have any friendly adjacent dwellings. So they're going to roll one against four. And they roll a two against a four. So see you, buddy. Nice try, nice try. We're going to have to do a regroup, and that just means that uh, these would come back, but we're going to play Raise the Dead. Uh, this means that we can use our workers on this card right here. Play when you regroup. Your units in the Underworld may be used to activate Tableau cards this turn. So that, that was a serendipitous. That was a good combo. Because uh, either we won, and we, we gained some good stuff, or we lost, we gained some resources, and we could play that card and still get to use these on the regroup. So, I'm okay with that. I think before I do that, I want to turn this in for a hammer. I'm not going to pull a hammer out. We'll just use that. I'm going to pay a hammer, and then I'm going to pay a sword, and we're going to summon our warrior. And he goes right to our mat, ready to go. And then I think I'm just going to gather a potion, and we'll discard this stuff, and these guys go back to our mat, and we're ready for our next turn. Rather, the ghost turn, actually. 
So they're going to roll a six. They don't have any here, so they're going to regroup. So they get two points for being here and one for here. So three more points. One, two, three. They have pulled ahead of us. So the wizard goes there. We have one, and there's number two right there. I'm going to place a worker right here for this, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, trade it in for a gem. They go, they roll a three. That wasn't really a roll, that was more of a drop, but we'll stick with it. Three. Uh, so they're going to go here. Of course, the watcher has moved on. There's nothing to see there anymore. And they want to place here. They can't, so they're going to place here. They want to place a new realm. So they pull another black tile. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's place this right here, I think. I'm not sure that's the best, but we'll see how that goes. Draw a card. We need the last. Again, these are only going to have two uh, tokens on them because that, they took one. We get to go, and I am going to place my warrior here. That means this guy's going to rush in, but we still do the action. And we're going to summon our dragon. Our dragon costs two gems and a scroll. And he goes straight to our mat, ready to play right away. So we can play him even on the next turn. Okay, so battle's going to ensue. We've seen this before. Five. We're going to pull in this worker here. We get a sword for doing that. So right now we are at, our, our warrior rolls two, our worker rolls one. We do have one support, so that's four. And I think I'm going to discard two swords to gain my last two dice. Not that it helped me last time, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll have better luck. Whoops, so that was a four. We rolled six. We rolled lots of sixes. Oh, this looks good. This looks really good. Uh, their highest two are fives. Woohoo! Yes, that's fantastic. Five. Man, we, we rolled balls. Okay, so six to five. This, that top two are the only ones that matter. So we have defeated the Treants. So that means this token comes off. And we look here and we can pick one of the two rewards. Now, if the, if the uh, ghosts ever defeat one, they just go up the track. And then if they can't go up the track, then they'll go up the glory track, which is this right here. Uh, we have our choice. We can go up the glory track or go up the elemental track. So we can get right here. Um, that doesn't seem as appealing as going up the glory track by one. So we go up by one and we get a reward of two points. So we are only one behind them now. And then our ghost player is going to go. Moves right there. Two. He wants to place in the mage tower. Of course, this dude's going to rush in. He wants to discover a new dwelling. So we pull the top one off. It is the monster den for the purple. Hmm. I think I'm going to put it right there. Yeah. Now, we look, there's four of these left. The game end is triggered whenever the last tile is drawn, then everybody gets one more turn, or a player builds their last uh, dwelling. Then everybody gets one more turn. So that's, that's we need to keep an eye on this, because the, these guys like to run that out pretty fast. Okay, so let's see. They uh, placed a new realm, and we need to put a stack of tokens on it. The last of the purple realms. I guess discarded. They pull out a new card, and a battle is going to happen. So this dude rolls four, it's three, four, and he rolls one. He can't pull in any, you know, he doesn't have anybody to pull in anyway, but he does get a second one for this. Nobody's in the underworld, so two against four. See how he does. Oh, he rolled a four, but they rolled two fives. So that uh, Death Reaper, man, he's, he's living up to his name. Living up to his name. I think I messed up. When they placed a worker here, they should have there should have been a battle. 
They should have gotten this. I totally messed up. So placing their third one, we're going to back up just a little bit. Placing their third one uh, right here. And that gives them up the glory track and two points. Sorry if I, hopefully I'm just messing that up for myself and I've caught it. Let's see. So they would battle us first. Let's, let's get through that. Um, I wouldn't have had a warrior, so I would have been rolling two dice against two dice from them. Um, so I was able to pull that out, but I'm going to let them keep. I'm going to let them keep their worker, which would be more beneficial. Um, I'll let them, I'll send them to the underworld because that wouldn't have changed anything for me. Sorry, I'm, I know that's confusing. I'll send them to the underworld because that's one point. If I left them on there, it would be zero points. So I don't want to deprive them of points without, without it being intentional anyway. Okay, so let's go here. And I'm very torn. Both of those are fantastic. Um, I can get a gold coin. Uh, gold is any resource I want it to be, and I think that may be the most helpful. The other one is a magic card. So I'm going to get a gold. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it in. I think, yeah, let's turn it in, and uh, that's it. That's it for me. All right. They are going to place their warrior. They want to place right here in the dungeon. And they're going to gain a card. It's going to be another purple card. Oh, man, I was really working towards getting that next. Okay. So they're going to go up the purple track. Unstable Portal comes out. They're coming up the purple track. I still have my dragon to play. So uh, I said that our dragon and our workers have special abilities, but everybody has uh, special abilities with their uh, dragon, wizard, and warrior in their placement. So... As I've said before, our workers can only be placed adjacent. Our warriors can only be placed adjacent, but when they're the very first piece be after regroup, the very first piece being placed, they can go into hostile territory. They can pick a fight. They're the only units that can pick a fight uh, without any other units on the board. Then we have the wizard. Uh, the wizard doesn't have to be adjacent. He can teleport anywhere on the board. So he's very weak in battle, but he's very powerful when placing. The dragon can fly. He can be placed up to three spots away. Our dragon has a special ability on top of that, that we have Tunneler. When you place the dragon, you may use the action of adjacent realm instead of the realm your dragon is in. So one place that might be uh, helpful is, let's say I want to go here. I could place, let's say, on the fortress, uh, because I can fly there, and I can still take the action there and not trigger this dude moving in. Because if I play straight there, he'd rush in. So, that's always very helpful. I tell you, I'm just really hurting on resources right now. So, oh, I think I want to go here. Yeah, and I'm going to take this. Not the best use of my dragon, but still. Okay, they're going to roll. Oops, missed the tray again. They roll a two, so they're going to regroup. So that's two points right there. One, two. And then they look here. They get two points for their warrior. One, two, being on a ruin. They place these back. One, two is already there. Three, and then the warrior. We want to regroup, and I think... I'm going to use this and this. Oh, I don't have a scroll. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use those two to summon another worker. Actually, I'm going to use instead of a potion. I'm going to use that and a sword. So that gets me another worker. Uh, we'll place our warrior here on the summon. We will take this guy and we'll place him on gather. So that's going to gather us another. Potion. We should have this up here. Um, he's just going to end up coming back, and th this guy's going to end up coming back as well because I don't have any place I can dwell. Okay, 
Not not the greatest turn. Six. They're gonna place their wizard. They want to place their wizard here. They can't. They place it here. They want a new adventure card. Of course they do. One. So they're going after another purple. And that means they are gaining on us. And I need to do something about that pretty fast. I think I want to try to gain some hammers. Hammers, 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 hammers. Uh, let's do this, actually. Let's go right there. Remember, my warrior can place where there's an enemy unit. Uh, now, this may not be the smartest play, but I like the idea of taking him on more than I like this dude rushing in wherever I go. So, warrior uh, is going to roll two dice. Their wizard rolls one, and they have an adjacent support for one. I mean, I could do a sword. Could do a sword, but I really don't want to. So let's just see who rolls better. All right. So they rolled a five. I rolled a four. I lose out on that. I still get this, by the way, uh, which is why I went there. Here and another sword. I'm okay with that. However, they have won, finally won a battle. They go up here. They don't gain a resource, which is what that icon is. They gain this instead. That's another point. So they're up to six points just in cards. It's their turn again, and they are going to roll a four, which means they want to place this unit uh, right here. They don't have any action they're going to take. Just That's two points when they regroup. I can go anywhere I want, and I think I really could use some scrolls, but I think I'm going to go here and gain a magic card. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn that in just to draw a magic Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to draw a magic card. Let's see. So we get another. Oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, Exodus is a prophecy card. At the end of the game, this card is worth four if you have summoned all of your workers. So I want to summon this last guy definitely let's move the watcher and roll the dice it's one they want to go east of the watcher they can't they're going to go here they want to construct a dwelling there's nowhere they can construct a dwelling because they've already done it there so wasting wasting some time there let's go right here and i'm going to take this and this guy is going to rush in that means i can't pull anything in but he rolls four dice. I get to roll three, four, three for the dragon, one for the dwelling. And I can spend both of my swords. No, 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 no. Do I want to spend one of my swords? I think I'll spend one of my swords just to try to get an edge. All right, come on, dragon. Beat them down. All right, we have a three there, I see. There's my six, they roll a six, that's canceled out. I rolled a five, they rolled a five, that's canceled out. They roll a five, I rolled a four. Ah, uh, they, ah, uh, he beats me, beats me. All right, so I get that sword back, yay. Ah, uh, so frustrating. All right, so I went here, watchers up there, and they roll a six, they can't do anything, they're gonna regroup. They get nothing for this, and they get nothing for this one, and they get two for this one. That goes right there. So they are at 27, 28, 28 points. Okay, so I did all of that to try to do this, but of course there's a dude there. But I'm, I'm just going to have to risk it. So he's going to rush in, watcher's going to watch, and... Um, we get to do all of this. So the first thing we do on the dungeon is place a dwelling or pull a tile. Sorry. Uh, so we get a blue tile. That's nice. Is that our first blue tile? Yes, it is. Where would I like this blue tile to go? I think I want this blue tile right there. Yeah, I like it. Okay. It gets some blue, uh, tokens on it. Oh, scroll. Finally. And you can look up here and see what you're most likely to find uh, in these in these elements. So that tells you that you're most likely to find a potion, but also the secondary is scrolls. That's why we haven't seen many scrolls, because they're all in the blue. Or no scrolls, actually. Okay, so now we can buy up to two of these adventure cards here. And the first one I want to buy is going... I'm going to turn this in for two hammers... 
and I'm going to buy Death's Door. Now this door is, is the door card for black and it allows me in this square to place a token. And then I can place a worker when I regroup and gain that. And if I'm the highest on the black track, I gain that token as well. So we're going to take that. We get to go up onto the black track, which just puts us at two. So not the highest yet. And now we don't flip this over. Uh, we have to choose from what is remaining. And I think I'm going to spend this to gain two potions. So trade that in for two potions. And then I'll pay one more potion and get this chaotic. And what this says is that when you gain the benefit with the attach card, so we're going to attach this to another card, roll a die. On a one to two, we forfeit the benefit. On a three through six, we gain double the benefit. So I'm going to, tar to attach it to this card right here. And that means when we put somebody there, we can gain double, possibly double, possibly nothing. So let's turn those in. And now we can flip these and reveal the new ones. Oh, Toxic Tunnels is fantastic. We may have to go back for that. And I need to go up this track, which gives us an orb. And the orb goes here. We can spend it now or later uh, as a free action. And I think that I'll just hold off on it right this second. Okay, now we have to take care of the battle. This Death Reaper is going to roll four. We're going to roll one. We can't pull anything in because of his ability, but we do have an adjacent uh, support unit, so we can gain two. Uh, we can spend a sword if we wanted to, to gain another one. Mm. Sure, why not? I mean, we'll get that sword back if we lose. So we'll be rolling three against their four. Better, better odds than two. I see they roll a six out of the gate and a five. Our biggest one is a five. So again, they win. We get that sword back. Look at us. So our ghost player's turn, and they roll a three. They want to go here. They can't, so they're going to go here and draw the ire of this dude. But before they do that, they're going to draw and place a new realm. Uh, it's a green one. Hmm. I think I want to place the green one down here. Yes, I think I do. Okay, way down there. And that's gone. They draw a new card. And then they can't pull in anybody. They do get one for support. I tell you, this dude's just wrecking today. All right, let's make sure. One, two, yep. Okay, so they rolled a six, uh, which is great, but the monster rolled a six. Their next one's a three, and the monster rolled a five. So, sit down there. Okay, I'm down to my last worker, and I have to place it somewhere around here. Um, I think I'm going to place it on the portal. This will allow us to get our last worker, and we can spin uh, two swords. Why not? Let's spin two swords on it. Okay, so that means we have completed the Exodus. We have summoned all six of our workers, and we get four points for this card at the end of the game. And four points can make a difference. Okay, we went here. They're going to go. They're going to place on the fortress, which is here. Whoops. This guy's going to rush in. And this is reshuffle the ghost deck. So we put this into our nice discard pile we take the draw pile we shuffle it all together that's the card that just keeps this churning and churning so that they always have an abundance of actions at their disposal because you don't want them to draw i mean i i want them to draw all of their place tile cards and and get that out of the way but you don't want them to place do all their place tile cards and then not have any way to continue pushing forward the game all right then we deal out a card then they're going to rumble. They get two. And he gets four. And wow, that's a really... They're just slapping at each other this turn. That was a four and a two. 
So they win. It's not a very high scoring battle though. I think let's go here. We're going to turn in two resources. Um, let's do this gold. No, let's do this potion. And we will first turn in that for, let's say, a sword. And we'll do a potion. So that's our two. And we're going to gain three cards and discard one. So we have Polymorph. Play on any player's turn. Choose one unit in your ready area and swap it out for one of the units in Elderville. That's really good. It's a better multiplayer card, but it's really a good card to have in your hand. Healing. Play on your turn. Gain one for each of your units in the Underworld. Return them to your ready area. That's fantastic. Rebuild the workshop. This is one of the quest cards. To complete this quest, you must have at least two tools in your supply. Gain one for each tool in your supply. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to get rid of Polymorph. And I'm going to keep this quest and see if we can complete it. Now, the healing, we're going to play right now. We're going to get one point for each of our units in the Underworld. That's three points. One, two, three. We haven't moved on that track for a while. That gets discarded. And we can return them to our ready area. So that means we do not have to regroup this turn. All right, we placed here. Watcher, is, or the uh, ghost is going to go. They're going to place their warrior. They want to place their warrior right here. They're going to gain this. And that goes here. That gets them a magic card. So I think, believe that's seven points. And they want to place a new realm. Only one left. They get this monster realm that I'm going to place down here. Uh, blue. It gets blue tiles on it. And it gets one of my favorite models in the game. The Dread Croc. Uh, the Dread Croc is really interesting. His, we'll, hopefully we'll see him. Uh, but what happens is, let's say I placed here. If he can, he's erratic. He will jump over and go here. But if I were to place here, for instance, he can't jump over. So that's when he goes in. So it's really, really neat how each of the monsters have their own personality. I tell you what, we're going to place here. We are going to take uh, this one, maybe. And of course, that's going to draw him over. He rushes in. And hopefully this gets us, we can't pull in him, but there's his four dice. We get to roll three. We get two extra because of these. And I will go ahead and trade that in for a sword. That will give us our sixth die. I think this is going to be our best chance. Doesn't mean we'll win, it's just our best chance. Oh man, I'm nervous. Six, six, oh no, six and a five. Oh, my next one was a five, his next one was a two. So good. Oh, dragon, gave me a sword. The ghost is going to go, he's rolling a five. And he wants to go right here. Of course, he wants to pick a fight because he knows my morale is down because I keep losing when I should be winning that. All right, so he's going here. Uh, he does no action. There's no action on that card. Uh, so we just going to battle it out. He always brings in, we haven't really seen a battle just between the two of us proper. He always brings in his any that he can. So he's going to bring in his warrior. Uh, that gives him, oh, he's going to get a lot of dice this turn. This may not be good. Okay, so he gets one for the worker, two for the warrior. He gets one for that, and then he gets one for each uh, unit in the underworld. And you can only have six dice, so he pulls in all six. So even if he had a, another one down here, he couldn't use it. So he's rolling all six dice. I get one for my worker. I can pull in a worker. I certainly will. This gains me a sword because of our special ability. And then I have two 
dwellings. So four, I'm going to definitely go ahead and turn that in for a fifth one. And I think I'm going to turn in another one for a sixth one because I would really like to win this battle. Six on six, or, well, give myself a fighting chance. Okay, battle ensues. That's a six. Uh, sorry, that was a six. Uh, six, six, six. And, man, he rolled poorly. His, his highest was a five. So, three, two, one, two, one, one. So that's, that's, oh man, I like lining these up sometimes. Just, just to see. Look at that. That's domination right there. Woo! Okay, I feel really good about that. They send, I mean, that's, they still get, they're going to end up getting one point for each of those. So that's not nothing. Uh, but we get to go up this track, which means we get to go up any track as a reward, any track we want to uh, over here on the elements. And I think I'm going to go up the black track because that makes sense. And actually, this dude should have moved in as well. And I don't remember what the role was. So when you have three, three units, then you actually have kind of a battle royale and only one victor. So we know I rule three sixes and he rolls all twos. So I defeat him as well. So now I actually have a choice. I can, let's, let's uh, it doesn't matter. So the choice would have been to go up the track uh, or go up the glory track. Either way, I went up the black track. So look at that. All right. Well, I, I finally defeated him. That feels good. So I really would like to build another dwelling. And to do that, I'm going to have to go two different places. I'm going to have to go here as one turn. Yeah, I'm going to have to go here for one turn. That's going to be a potion. And then they're going to go, putting the Watcher here... Uh, three, they're going to regroup. Uh, see, they have nothing on the board, but they gain four points. One, two, three, four. They are at 50, 32, 32. It's hard to see. 32. Let's put these back. One, two, three, and the warrior there. And then our placement now is going, oh no, that's not going to work. I'm going to switch this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I wasn't thinking. I was got tired. I should have placed my warrior there because I want to build a dwelling here. That's what I was working towards. I already said it. So not. it doesn't change anything because battle. Not going to happen. So, sorry. We're going to take this gem token. And that's it for us. We roll. They roll one. They're going to get the mage tower right here. And they're going to gain two points of magic cards. One, two. Very simple card, but very scary. That's two points. Uh, we can regroup. And I'm going to take this and slot it right here, I believe. Not, I'm not the farthest up the track, though. So maybe I'll wait. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. So let's go ahead and roll for this card. I'll just roll their die. One to two. We're not going to get anything. Three to four. We get something. Uh, we get nothing. So I waste a worker on that. Pull back this worker, and we'll let him gather another potion. We will bring back this worker, and uh, let's see. Can I pull out? I've got. Do I have two potions? I need a scroll. I can't summon because I need a scroll. Poor planning. Poor planning. All right. So he's just gonna come back. Uh, or he's going to go to dwell, sorry. And we're going to spend one potion to dwell this dude right there. Then our warrior is just going to come back. Okay, so this is going to get us two, four points. Only four points. One, two, three, four. And we are already at the top of the purple track. So that did not work in our favor. I'm rolling horribly today. Two, they're going to the dungeon. And they're going to gain an adventure card. 
six is going to be a blue card. That's going to move them up onto the blue track even further. Okay, trying to think of what I need to get done before that comes out. Because I'm not doing too fantastic right now. I need to build a dwelling because in order to score this card right here at the end, I need to build a dwelling in the black in one of the black areas. So, oh, I forgot to bring this dude back. I'd like to pick another fight, but one I could win. Um, so I think let's start here. I'm going to fight him because he's only going to roll two dice. And that will get me three, or sorry, two dice plus one. Two is four. I don't think I'm going to spend any swords. I don't have any swords to spend, so I definitely am not. Uh, let's see. Here we go. And wow, he rolled like a boss. Dude, that worker is a beast. Well, he killed my warrior. I do get a sword now. So going after that worker did me no good whatsoever. Um... I didn't do my action though. I needed to do my action. So I trade in two resources. Um, let's see. I can trade in a gem. That's fine. I'll, I'll use that. And I'll use this other potion that I had. Nope. nope I won't. I'll use this gold. Oh, I see. I just got the sword. So I'll use this gold. The gem and the gold. And that would get me... Some magic cards that I probably could have used, but I won't take it back. So we have Fireball. See, I could have used that. Ritual. And this has a cost. You have to be either up one on the black track, which we are, or uh, pay one sword. Play on your turn. Move one of your units from Eldervale into the Underworld. Then instead of gaining a sword, gain, draw three magic cards. Oh, that's nice. Blood Rage. Play on your turn. Gain one glory. An epic battle is triggered in the Underworld. Units may join from Eldervale and or ready areas. Each player must participate. Wow. So you pull in workers he or units here. That's interesting. So I think I'm going to discard Blood Rage and keep these two right here. Let's see. Watcher should be here. Let's roll a die. It's going to be a six. So they are going to place here and try to construct a dwelling. No place they can construct. They haven't been doing fantastic on dwellings, although I haven't either, so that doesn't really help me. I think I'm going to place a worker right here and get this scroll. Yep. And I don't remember when I placed him if I got the leftmost token, so we're going to do that now and give him another card. Again, if they beat me, that's my fault but I don't want to jip them points. Okay, so we placed up here. They are going to roll. And they roll a six, so they're going to regroup. So that's two points, four points. One, two, three, four. They are at 36. And they have none in here. Let's see, one, two, three, and they get their wizard back. Okay, that's good for me. Good for me. I'm going to send my dragon down here, and I'm going to get this gold right there. Their turn, they roll a two, so they're going to place in the mage tower. So that's the card that can end the game for us right there. So I need to book it, I believe. Okay, let's place here. We'll gain a hammer. Then they roll a six. They place their wizard. Uh, ew, in the same spot as us. That's not good at all. Not good at all. Man, so they're going to try to gain a new adventure card. Or not try, they will. Uh, they get a purple. Moving them up that track. And then we need to battle. And I do I want to pull that in. Let's see. Let's see how many dice he's going to get. He's going to get one, two, 
and I don't think I want to I'm gonna get one I guess I'll pull in that one and gain a sword and spin the sword so I get three dice Ugh. man that's putting a lot on the line right there oh but I roll a six and they roll snake eyes so that's that worked out I go here I get one of these or I get two points, but I'm going to gain a orb instead. Okay, I'm going to push my luck a little bit. And I'm going to go here to gain another potion token. Oh, I may regret that. Okay, four means they want to go here. They want to pick a fight there. Ugh. So they get two dice. We've seen this dance before. I'm not going to pull in another worker. I'm going to spend, just roll the two there. I don't get any support, so I'll spend a sword to get a third dice. And I'm hoping for something good. Okay, yes, a six to their four. I'll take it. It's another battle I've won. Whoops. I have messed up somewhere on here. I think I've gotten these switched. Uh, but they should have been at least here. So, sorry, I've messed that up. Uh, so I get to move up here and I gain a resource. Hmm. Yes, I do. I do want a resource. I would like a hammer. All right, our turn. We're going to have to regroup. So I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. I want to slot this down here on that card. It's locked onto that card. I'm going to roll a die and I get a two because that's not my die and that's bad luck. So I don't get to take anything from here. Um, okay, so then I'm going to play on this turn. Move one of your units from Elder Veil into the Underworld. Boom. Then, instead of gaining a sword, draw three magic cards. One, two, three. All right. So, we have Aerial Assault. Play during the join phase of the battle. That's when you can move other units in. So, when I move this over uh, up to two of your units from your ready area may join the battle that's always good but it's really expensive it's a little late for that then we have two more of those I don't even need to look at them because um, because this is worth two uh, one point for each prophecy card that I have at the end of the game whether I've completed it or not just in my hand fantastic and I could have used a fireball but I didn't. At least I've been winning. Keep forgetting that's there. All right. Uh, but one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to get rid of something because these are considered resources, so I can only have five of them. I'm getting rid of that quest because I'm not going to be able to. Well, actually, I'll play that quest. I'll play that quest and score two points. To complete this quest, you must have at least two tools in your supply. We have tool. To gain one for each of your tools in your supply. So we'll say I played that before I drew. And I get two points. One, two, just to get it out of my hand. Now I have one, two, three, four, five cards in my hand. Okay, so we're still regrouping. We are going to pull this back and put him in dwell. And we want to pay two hammers to dwell right there. So we give him a hat. And that's going to move us up one on the black track, putting us in the lead. And um, then we get two, four, four points. Four points. One, two, three, four. All of a sudden, that gap's not looking so big. Okay, these come back because they're there. They don't do anything. And then we can take this dude back. Um, can, I, I, can I summon my wizard? Let's summon my wizard. I don't think... Sure. I mean, these aren't doing me any good right now. So I'm going to trade in those two. And this, two potions and a scroll get me a wizard. Now whether I'll get to use that or not, who knows. Okay, so that was my regroup. It's their turn. They're going to roll a one, 
and they are going to place the last realm, which is what I was afraid of. So they're placing one here. They get this, which gives them, uh, that's the symbol for an adventure card. They're going to roll a two and gain a green adventure card, taking them up here on the green track. Ah, uh, so bad, Justin. Ah, uh, made a huge mistake. Okay, they always want to place it on the leftmost. They just want points. That's three points for them. One, two, three. I'm sitting on two stones that I should have put down. I'm just playing poorly. Poorly. They want to place a new, and it's this one. Um, it doesn't really matter. Let's place it right here. Uh, and stacks will come out. Let's put this in the left, this in the right. Okay, so really this is our last turn. So I need to decide. Either I go to the dungeon and I try, I use my orbs to get some points. That would actually be good. Actually, yes, that would be very good. Uh, I think that's my only move. I, the, my only other move is to pick a fight. Um, because then I can go up a track and make what I have more worthwhile. But actually, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go to the dungeon. I can't place a tile, so I can, I can grab two cards. So let's see what I can do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a coin. So we'll get rid of that coin and um i need some potions and i need some hammers really that's all i can do is potions or hammers okay so we have these orbs here and there's a track up here we could have stolen three points but we didn't um it. So let's see, I can gain two potions here. That's not enough, I need four. Um, I could gain two coins. That would be three coins. Let me, just, let me just play this out. I have one coin, so let's see. If I get three coins, two potions. If I use those in my two, I can go up here. I can get this one. And that's it. Oh, so I might as well get two coins. That would give me three. So we'll put one there. And then I'm going to gain two points. Two points. Just straight up two points. Not the best thing ever. Uh, so I can buy one card with three, which will be oh man, that's not gonna work either. Yeah, I mean it's just gonna be this card. Three here. We do get to go up the black track right there. So that I mean that doesn't really help us. But it gives us points. Okay, that's our last turn. Then they get one more turn. And they roll a one. They are going... Where did I go? I went here. Uh, so they want to go here. They can't. So they're going to go here. And this may work out in our favor. Because they want to battle. They're going to roll two dice. Plus one support. They don't have anybody they can pull in. I roll three dice. And I have one support. There's nobody I can pull in, so I just have a one die edge. Ooh, what are we going to get? We roll a six, they roll a two. Wow. Okay, so we win this battle. That sends us up this track. Yes, okay, this sends, up, uh, sends us up this track. So maybe I should have picked a battle first. Um, and I'm going to, you know, this is worth points. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. All right, that's the end of the game. That's the end of the game. That was a long, drawn-out game. Okay. So that was uh, whew, that was a tough-fought battle game. 
Uh, so we're going to go to end scoring. And we're going to score the ghost first. So the ghost scores um, the following. Elemental power. Score the position of the ghost player marker on each of the elemental tracks. So we look and he's got five points here. Uh, so everything kind of centers around the scoring point track. Five, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 points for him means that's one, uh, 10 is 50, and one more is 12. So he's at 51. Then he's going to score his dwellings, which will score just like a living player. So each dwelling you look at is worth whatever, wherever your marker is on here. So we'll look at his green first. This one's going to be five more points. Uh, so 56. And this one's going to be worth three points. So one, two, three. He's at 59. Okay, that's it for those. Then adventure cards. This is going to be a big lump of his points. So I need to sort these out by color and let's look he gets on the green he's going to get 5 10 15 because they're worth the number of points on the track so 5 10 15 uh let's see he is at four here so let's go ahead and just do the 15 uh 5 10 15 and back one and then Four for each of these is 12. So let's go 1, 5, 10, 12. Okay. And then 6 for these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's at 92. 92. And then scores the magic cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whoa, 10. I didn't know he got that many. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So 92 means that he is at 102, which is not not really that high in, high score for, for them. Uh, I think my highest score, uh, or the, the highest score a ghost player has gotten is 180, 140. Somewhere in that area is typically, somewhere in the 140s is, I mean, this game can, I've had, I had a game where I played the other day where I beat them and they were in the 70s, and I was in, like, the lower 90s. So, really, just every time we tried to do something, monsters would just, boom, on us. But that's their final score. 102. All right, fantastic. Now let's score us. I don't think we've done that well. So, any unspent orbs are worth one victory point. So, we're at 35. Woohoo! So that's one point for us. Uh, then we have elemental markers. Score victory points. So we get five points here, five points here for 10. Just 10 points. Uh, so that's 45. Then we have our dwellings. I'll come back to those. Our tableau cards. So the way we score tableau cards is that uh, we can score, we score our starter card, but we have to score, you can only score three per dwelling. That's why I had to get this black dwelling uh, at the end so that I could score these cards. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm good. I have a black dwelling. I only have two black cards. I have plenty of purple dwellings. I only have one purple card, and then you can always score your starter. So, uh, black cards are worth five. These are worth five. So, 5, 10, 15, 20. So, 45, 55, 65. So that's that's good. That's good. All right. And then if we had any vault cards, which we don't, I don't even think we saw one come up. Uh, but they're adventure cards that score points at the end that say, uh, let's see if I can find one real quick. Let's see. Cemetery, Curse of Ember, Great Alive, Wall of Bones, uh, Desolation, Vault. At the end of the game, gain two points for each of the following resources you have none of. Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> I could have scored some good points off of that. Man. So that's what a vault card is. We don't have any of that. 
Uh, let's go back to our dwellings and we score our dwellings. So each purple one is worth five, five, 10, 15. And then this is also worth five, so 20. Five, 10, 15, 20. All right, 65, 75, 85. And then we score any of these. So let's see. Let's start with Vast Empire. At the end of your game, score based on the number of dwellings you have built. I have built one, two, three, four dwellings. So four dwellings gives me three points. One, two, three. Fireball is not going to do anything for me. At the end of the game, this card is worth four points. If you have summoned all of your workers, I have. So four points. One, two, three, four, 92. At the end of the game, this card is worth two points for each different type of elemental realm in which you have a dwelling. So I got that. That was one of the last cards I drew. So I'm going to get four points because I'm in two different elements, purple and black. So what did I say? Uh, four points. One, two, three, four. And then at the end of the game, this card is worth two points. One, two. And then one point for each prophecy card you have. So I have uh, three cards, three prophecy cards, because that card's already scored. Three more cards. One, two, three. 101 to 102. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is, that's a very close game. A, a 10 point or 15 point gap is a really close game. But that is phenomenally close. One point. Man. And if I'd had one more turn, I was going to build a dwelling here or here. Uh, probably here to try to gain more. But I ended up with that battle. Because I thought I was going to be stuck there. Uh, yeah. No. That's. Oh. And that would have been another five, four or five points. So. Yeah, that was really close. That was our first playthrough of Dwellings of Everdale. Let's go back up top. And that was Dwellings of Eldervale. And I have to say, this game has a lot to offer. One, it has a ton of replay value. Uh, again, in the Legendary Edition, there is a just a ton of stuff. There's double the amounts of monsters. There's extra portal tiles and, and ruin tiles and things like that. Uh, just extra things to explore, but I think even in what I looked at with the retail edition There's just gonna be a lot of replay value uh, even playing the same races and The same AI you're going to get a lot of differences in the way those cards come out the monsters the way they come out There's just a lot of variety in the way it sets up and plays through and I think that that's a very big positive for this game one of my friends compared this game to scythe and once they said that I kind of see that this may appeal to some of those same audience or maybe even if you didn't like Scythe and wanted a little more I, I dare call this a little more streamlined experience it's different but it has a lot of the same feelings that Scythe has this is this is a game that you might want to check out and I really enjoy it I have a lot of fun and I think my favorite part is the AI system the AI system is very solid it is it is quick it is low maintenance but even when their turns go long, uh, usually due to battle, you're invested because one, they're either battling with you and you have an investment in that outcome. But even if you're running a battle between them and one of the monsters, there's times I even root for them to beat one of the monsters that's in my way. So that's, there's an investment in that outcome. And just the, the simple fact that you're just rolling dice and looking at the, the two highest ones, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, that just makes it go just like that. It's really nice. So there's a lot to like about this game. There's tons of different factions in it and they all play a little different. They all have little different uh, abilities, but those monsters, they can, when they come out and the abilities they have, you saw the Death Reaper just, just ran over us. Uh, just so powerful. And I've had games where he's been in it and hasn't come out at all. And it's just been very different. So Dwellings of Eldervale, if, if you're interested in seeing more playthroughs of this on the channel because there's so much more to explore, you know, definitely think about giving this video a thumbs up so that uh, it helps the channel out and I know that this is something that you guys are interested in. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a video coming up. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, happy gaming.